Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sophie and I'm a third year computer science and master of management student at the University of British Columbia. And today is gonna be a little bit of a different video cause I wanna tell you guys a little bit more about myself, how I got to where I am, and how you guys can also start on your entrepreneurship journeys. These days I'm actually working um, or helping other students build a startup called Mindset. Um, link to the website is going to be in the description below and this is such an amazing and challenging um, opportunity that I'm actually insanely grateful for. Basically what this startup is is it's a artificial intelligence dementia screening application which just sounds absolutely insane and mind-blowing. Everyone is so awesome so dedicated and it's just been an insane uh, learning experience. So today I'm going to share with you guys how I got to this point and kind of my journey um, and yeah I'll take you guys along. One takeaway that you should take from this video is that the most important thing is exposure, exposure and exposure. You want to put yourself out there. I'm going to be sharing with you advice on kind of the three best ways that you can really generate more exposure for yourself to get in touch with other startups and just put your foot into the door um, when it comes to that profession or that industry. First I'm going to be tackling projects and those are going to be split into personal projects and group projects. Next Next I'm going to be talking about kind of official skills which is like courses and certifications that you can take. Lastly and probably the most important point is after you've done all that how do you actually become discoverable and that is kind of like the the main key to exposure. Okay so let's start with talking about uh, projects and um, personal projects. So in order to talk about this I'm going to throw it all the way back to when I probably started getting into computer science or programming and this was in grade 9 I believe so I was like 13 14 the first main project I really started working on uh, I didn't get paid for and I did it in MIT App Inventor um, and we had used that program in in class a little and I was like oh this is kind of cool I can actually create stuff and don't have to actually write like proper code so my mom at that time she was actually kind of working with other companies and one of them was a kind of counseling service um, or tutoring service that helped kids that had difficulties in math so I was like okay I know how to use MIT app and mentor insane programming language <laughs> um, and I want to build something for this company so what I set out to do is I was like okay I am I asked my mom to give me a whole set of documents that kind of outlined their philosophy when it came to teaching and I remember back then spending weeks during my summer holidays reading through those documents, those guidelines, highlighting nearly everything on a page. And I was really trying to dig into how they taught. And then I used that information and built a MIT App and Mentor app, which is actually still available on the App Store. You guys can check it out, link in the description if you want to. And it was basically an app that allowed the children that went to this tutoring service to practice their kind of math skills um, through games gamification and I public I actually um, pitched it to the board of that company that was one of the most scariest moments in my life back then but the main takeaway for you guys here is I did this for free and this is something that might be a little controversial um, but I believe that if you've got a passion and you want to turn it into a profession uh, one of the best ways to get started if you really don't have any experience and you just want to get your foot into the door and you're too young for like internship opportunities especially if you're in middle school like I was back then just go out ask a company offer them your services for free the first time and just do something because it's something you can put on your resume and if the if the company actually likes what you did you can then offer your services to them again but this time for money so first time is free but then from then on you can start charging and then um i did mention that i used mit app inventor in class so as the kind of class project that i did was a german target game which was this educational game that taught german grammar so again that was another small project i worked on and these two projects they might not seem like much heck they weren't 
weren't even programmed using a true programming language. So how is this useful? Well, back then in middle school, that was all I had. That was all I could do. So it still gave, gave me projects that I could put onto my first ever resume. And that was more than quite a lot of people had back then. And more recently, actually during this quarantine, I created my first iOS app that was really public in the iOS store. Again, link in the description if you want to check it out, you can go download it. It's a parking utility app. Um, and my goal with that wasn't to just like create insane amount of money or get insane amount of downloads. I just wanted to create an iOS app and put it in the store because I had created iOS apps before, but I never actually added one into the app store. And just that process alone, because that's something that you also want to keep in mind when adding projects to your resume is it's one thing to program an app or to program a project, but there's a lot more that goes into that. For example, with this parking app, I did the designs, I did the logo designs, I did the mockups, I did the screenshots for the app store, I did the optimizations, I did the beta testing, I did the coding, and there's so much more that goes into actually creating an app and releasing it on the store that it's just a great experience to go through, even if you're not planning on making millions with it. So those are some of the personal projects that I've done in the past, and now I'm gonna move on to group projects. And when it comes to group projects, one awesome and insane opportunity that anyone that's in computer science or has access, they should really look into hackathons. Hackathons are an amazing, amazing, amazing opportunity to just learn and network. It's actually insane and they're free and it's totally crazy. It's one of the best things in this world in my opinion. So my very first hackathon was actually the most successful one I've ever had because my entire team carried me. We created created an Android app, link in the description, called Necotap. I had no clue what I was doing. I remember one of the more experienced guys telling me, oh, you should probably add a button there. And I spent, I kid you not, I spent two hours trying to figure out how to add a button into an, I, uh, into an Android app. And that was my first year of computer science. That was fun, but I learned so much from that. And we actually ended up winning that hackathon and we came first place and then we submitted it into the Microsoft Imagine Cup. Link in the description if you guys want to participate. It's an insane opportunity as well. Um, we submitted it into the Microsoft Imagine Cup and we actually got invited to the regional finals, which was absolutely crazy. So they invited us to the Microsoft headquarters in Seattle. Um, and then like when it, at, at that point I was, you know, I was pretty solid when it came to Android Pro. Programming. I was able to like create calendars that showed you when you had to refill your prescriptions and all, all of that cool jazz. Um, and that was also an insane opportunity. This is another key takeaway here is that with my personal projects and also with uh, my group projects, I didn't make any insane amount of money with them or anything. And we didn't win the Microsoft Imagine Cup. But when it comes to the Imagine Cup, we actually got people because we were invited to the Microsoft Build Conference. Um, I remember people coming up to me that worked at large companies saying they're interested in our project. But my point here is that this might all seem like failures to, to you because I didn't launch any huge business. I didn't make millions, but that's not what it's about. Um, it's about exposure again. My second ever hackathon project was called CO2 Map, link in the description as well. That was at Dub Hacks uh, at a um, hackathon at the University of Washington. My third hackathon project was called Physiospace, which was a computer vision, um, physio at home kind of app web app that was again at the same hackathon as my first one which was nw hacks um i linked to their channel as well um that's a great hackathon organized here at ubc and i'm actually one of the uh, members that helped organize it this year the most recent hackathon i attended was actually the one at stanford which is called tree hacks which was an insane opportunity again and there something that's really important is because i had been at the microsoft imagine cup and because I'm very active on LinkedIn, something I'll come to, I actually knew, I had new people at Microsoft and one of them was there and I just kind of started talking to them. And we built this really cool project that was called Read AR, again, link in the description. I started talking with that person that I knew from Microsoft and she really liked her project and we actually ended ended up winning the uh, Microsoft award at that hackathon, which was also really, really cool and such a crazy experience. So hackathons are a great chance, again, to just go out there and add variety to your portfolio because you do want a nice, 
combination of personal and group projects. Okay, so now let's move on to talking about official skills. And I'm gonna start off with talking about uh, certifications here. So one of, actually the only certification I have is the Java Foundations Junior Associate Certification by um, Oracle, Oracle University. And I also did that in combination with my school. So that was really, really cool. And again, it's not something that I really, that has generated a lot of opportunity now, but I feel like especially back then in grade 11 or something, Thing, that is something that makes you stand out so it's just a great thing to have on your resume and it also boosts your own confidence just knowing that you have that certification and you're actually officially good at something so moving on to courses i actually did my first online course i think uh during this quarantine as well because there were like insane discounts on uh, coursera for example and i did the stanford machine learning course on coursera that was a course about machine learning and it it was very heavy on the theory side but again it's something i wanted to look deeper into uh, machine learning and it's just again a piece of paper that you have a, a, certif a certificate that you have uh, of completing that course that again boosts your confidence because it's this official thing where your skills are recognized and that's always nice as a confidence booster and it's also something that you can throw on your resume okay so now coming to probably the most important part of this video is actually becoming discoverable um because you might think okay so if you've done all of these projects things that are pretty cool um i'm also doing projects and stuff but I'm not working for a startup, how come you are? Or how come you created these side businesses and I haven't? Well, this is probably what makes the difference is that I'm really, really active when it comes to networking and also using social media to network. So again, I said that when I was at the Imagine Cup, I really use that as an opportunity to network. And I also use hackathons as a great opportunity as a great opportunity to network. And I'm really, really active on LinkedIn as well. I actually post every single video I release on LinkedIn. And that's just because I want that exposure. Because it's all fine and good if you do these projects, if you do these personal projects, group projects, certification courses, and you put them on your resume, but you want people to see your resume and how are they gonna see it? Well, you have to expose it to them. You have to become discoverable. And what's really important here is that you keep your LinkedIn profile really polished. And if you don't know what LinkedIn is, you guys should really check out LinkedIn. Here's the insane thing of how I actually ended up um, helping build the startup that I'm helping build right now it's through LinkedIn. One of my high school friends had been to a different high school in a different country previously. And one of the people who also went to his old high school, um, he was starting this, this uh, startup called Mindset and they were looking for an iOS developer. And randomly on a random day during the summer holidays, I got a message on LinkedIn from this guy asking if I was interested. I had never talked to him before. I still have have never seen him in person and I've worked for this startup now for I think um, about a year or half a year, something like that. And it's, it's so crazy to me, the power of networking and especially of LinkedIn that I only got this opportunity cause I was on LinkedIn and cause I keep my LinkedIn profile updated. And here, um, if you guys want any advice on how to keep your LinkedIn profile updated, or, or clean and make the best out of it, leave a comment below if you want me to make an entire video about that because that is something that is so important when it comes to really getting opportunities and getting exposure, 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 which again is the most important thing to generating opportunities for yourself. You want to put yourself out there. As I previously mentioned, um, none of these businesses were like a success or like a textbook success. Um, they didn't make millions for me there. They're not used by millions of people, but they're all stepping stones to where I got to now, which is that I'm actually helping build a startup and I'm actively involved in the startup, which is super cool. And the way I look at it is I don't look at a single hackathon or a single project as did I fail or did I succeed? No, I look at the entire journey. I have a goal in mind Am I on the right path to achieve that goal? If so, then I'm succeeding. If not, then I'm not necessarily failing, but I need to just 
change the trajectory and put myself on the right path again. I did talk quite a bit about my hackathon projects, but if you guys want me to make a more detailed video, about those projects kind of the planning that goes into it how we went about doing it all the preparation um how we ended up winning leave a comment as well and i can go and make a future video about that if you so desire start as many things as you can i recently started another side business two days ago um and yeah if you guys want to know more about that also leave a comment below and might make a video about that too so i hope you found this video useful and helpful and that it could provide some value to you guys and um yeah go check out all the things that are linked in the description they're they're gonna help you out and if you guys want to look at my um portfolio my kind of software engineering portfolio i'll leave a link to that in the description as well and i'll also link my resume in the description too so you guys can kind of see a sample or just of how i did it thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video leave a like subscribe turn on the notification bell to stay tuned to future videos and as always take care and i'll see you soon